Welcome to today's podcast of Places, People, Purpose. In our last episode, we talked about Bilbao and the amazing transformation it has made over the years from an industrial city to a place of architectural and cultural importance. In today's episode, we're going to learn some more interesting things about Bilbao and then travel to San Sebastian located in the Northeast region of Spain. I'm really looking forward to sharing this information with you, so let's get started. Bilbao, like the rest of the Basque country, has a strong sense of Basque identity. As far as cuisine, Basque cuisine is world famous, and Bilbao is no exception. The city is known for its pinchos which we would describe as tabas on steroids. One of our favorite pinchos was the Gilda. The Gilda is a tribute to Hollywood legend Rita Hayworth, who starred in the movie named Gilda. This pincho consists of a wonderful, sweet, and spicy gundila pepper, a salty anchovy, and a wonderful Spanish olive. This combination is just fantastic. If you'd like to see a picture of a Gilda, please visit our website, placespeoplepurpose.com. Bilbao hosts a variety of festivals throughout the year. The Semana Grande in August is a major event with cultural performances, firework, and traditional Basque sports. Music and dance are also integral to the Basque culture. A traditional Basque flute and an accordion are commonly used in Basque folk music. The traditional Basque dance, known as Euskal Danza, is performed at festivals and special events. In addition to the Guggenheim Museum, Bilbao is home to other cultural institutions, like the Bilbao Fine Arts Museum and the Bilbao Maritime Museum, which offer insights into the city's history and art. Bilbao's history and culture are characterized by a unique blend of Basque traditions, industrial heritage, and modern influences. The city has wonderfully transformed itself into a vibrant and dynamic city with a strong cultural identity. Let's now move eastward along the northern part of Spain and start our journey of San Sebastian. Located along the Bay of Biscay on the northern coast of Spain, the city of San Sebastian, or Donostia in the Basque language, has a rich and diverse history. The origins of San Sebastian trace back to antiquity when the area was known as Yoso during Roman times. As a port city, it thrived on trade and maritime activities, establishing a foundation that would evolve over centuries. The name Donostia is believed to have Basque roots, with the city's history intricately entwined with the Basque culture that remains a vibrant force to this day. San Sebastian's development gained momentum during the Middle Ages the city became a key fishing and trading port. Due to its strategic location along the Bay of Biscay, San Sebastian was often a target for military conflicts. It faced various invasions and battles, including the Napoleonic Wars. The Napoleonic Wars, which spanned from 1803 to 1815, had a significant impact on San Sebastian, bringing about a period of turmoil, occupation, and resistance. The city became a theater of conflict during this time. In 1808, during the Peninsular War, 
which was part of the Napoleonic Wars, French forces invaded Spain. San Sebastian was occupied by the French in July 1808, marking the beginning of a challenging period for the city. The city faced its first siege in 1808 when Spanish and British forces attempted to liberate it from French occupation. However, the siege was unsuccessful and the French remained in control. The people of San Sebastian actively participated in resistance efforts against French occupation. The city's history during this period is marked by stories of local resistance movements and acts of defiance. San Sebastian became a focal point of conflict once again during the 1813 campaign. British and Portuguese forces, along with Spanish allies, laid siege to the city. The second siege, which lasted from July to September 1813, resulted in the eventual capture of San Sebastian by the Portuguese, British, and Spanish allies, and was a strategic victory against the French occupation of the Iberian Peninsula. The successful siege of San Sebastian contributed to the overall pushback against French forces in Spain during this period. The siege and battles took a toll on San Sebastian's infrastructure. The city suffered damage to buildings, fortifications, and other key structures. With the end of the Napoleonic Wars and the withdrawal of French forces, San Sebastian faced the task of rebuilding and recovering from the physical and economic impacts of the conflict. The Napoleonic Wars left a lasting imprint on the historical memory of San Sebastian. The city's experience during this turbulent period became part of its collective identity, shaping its resilience and determination in the face of adversity. The late 19th and 20th centuries marked a period of opulence for San Sebastian during the Belle Epoque. European royalty and the elite flocked to the city, drawn by its exquisite beaches and burgeoning cultural scene. The Paseo de la Concha, a promenade along the stunning La Concha beach, became a symbol of the city's elegance lined with architectural marvels that showcased the wealth and sophistication of the time. Like much of Spain, San Sebastian was affected by the Spanish Civil War from 1936 to 1939. The conflict tested the resilience of its people, and remnants like the Alderdi Eater Gardens, once an air raid shelter, serve as poignant reminders of a turbulent period in its history. In the aftermath of World War II, San Sebastian, like much of Europe, faced the task of rebuilding infrastructure and recovering from the economic impact of the war. The city underwent urban renewal and reconstruction efforts to repair damage caused during the conflict. This period saw the restoration of buildings and the expansion of infrastructure to meet the evolving needs of the population. The tourism industry played a crucial role in the economic development of San Sebastian. The city's reputation as a resort destination, coupled with its cultural attractions, contributed to its growth. Now that we have an understanding of the history of San Sebastian, let's discover one of the more unique aspects of this part of the world. The Basque Country is located in the Western Pyrenees region, straddling the border between Spain and France. While Spanish is widely spoken, Euskara is still actively used, and many street signs and official documents are bilingual. The origin of the Basque language is a subject of considerable linguistic debate. 
Uskara is unique among European languages because it is not related to any other language family in the world. It is considered a language isolate, meaning it has no known connections to other languages, making it one of the most enigmatic languages on Earth. The bottom line is that no one really knows where the language comes from. Isn't that something? The mystery surrounding the origins of the Basque language adds to its allure and distinctiveness. Uskara is a resilient and living language, and efforts have been made to preserve and promote it. Today, the Basque language is a source of pride for the Basque people, and it is actively used in various aspects of Basque culture, including literature, music, and education. Our guide in San Sebastian was Juan, and he was very entertaining. He told us about his very strong Basque mother and his Spanish father. Juan and his brother speak Basque because their mother taught it to them while they were growing up. He said that his father is learning Basque, but that if he and his brother and mother speak fast or use Basque slang, his father has difficulty understanding them. So the three of them speak rapidly and use slang when they want to talk about something but don't want their father to know what they are talking about. He told us that when they do this, their father looks at them and says, you bastards. <laughs> we had a good laugh about that. But I can tell you that the Basque language is not straightforward and it is not easy. The only thing we learned how to say during our time in San Sebastian was thank you. Juan told us since it was close to Halloween, we should think of the word scary, and then add to that the word Costco, as in the large US store. So we went around saying scary Costco, scary Costco, and people seemed quite surprised that we could say thank you. So I guess we were able to pronounce it better than most. That was fun. That's all we have for today. I hope you enjoyed learning more about Bilbao and the beautiful coastal city of San Sebastian. In our next episode, we're going to uncover some more fun and interesting information about San Sebastian. I think you will enjoy it very much. So please join us for our next episode of Places, People, Purpose, where we create connections to our world.